Hello again. We're looking now at sums of random variables. So the simple result is this. I'm looking at the variance of a sum. So variance of x plus y is variance of x plus variance of y plus twice the covariance. If I have a minus, the minus goes with, with the covariance. So variance of x minus y is still variance of x plus variance of y but minus twice the covariance. And if I've got some constants happening here, ax and by, then they will just get work multiplied in the usual way. So with the a, if I'm looking at variance of this, this becomes a squared variance of x, this becomes b squared variance of y, and then the cross product is a times b times the covariance. So I can think of this essentially as ax and by and ax and by because essentially variance of x ax plus by becomes if I'm looking at variances of something then becomes variant covariance of ax plus by and ax plus by the variance of something is the covariance of that thing with itself so I've got here a is squared and then these two together become the variance of x and here I've got a times b times the covariance of x and y. And here in the, this I've got again a times b times the covariance with x and y. And the last one I've got b squared times the variance of y. So whenever I've got y with itself or x with itself, it becomes a variance. Otherwise it just remains as covariance. So you can see how I get the result over here. I've got that term and that term which is the a squared variance and b squared variance and now we've got this happening twice twice a b covariance of x and y so if you just remember how it works out with this table idea everything follows from there if x and y are independent and that's a nice thing to have then I know what happens is the covariance term is zero so covariance of x y in this case is going to be zero so the covariance term disappears and all I get is a variance of x plus y is variance of x plus the variance of y even with a minus sign, if you look at this over here, all that happens is the covariance term disappears. It's still variance of x plus y. So whenever I've got independence, variance of x plus y or variance of x minus y is variance of x plus variance of y. And here are the proofs. Again, you can look at them if you wish. Extension of this last result of 3 is, if x and y are independent, if I've got x1, x2 up to xn, and they're all independent, then the variance of the sum is a sum of the variance. This only works with independent random variables, or at least when the covariance is a 0. So independence here is a nice property to have because it simplifies our calculations. Here's the example we'll work through. The table here gives us the joint probability mass function of the number in hundreds of single cones and double cones of ice cream sold per day. S denotes the single cones and D denotes the double cones sold per day. So it says find the variance of the total number and the difference in the number of cones sold per day. And it says the net profit for single cones is two dollars and for double is three. Well, what's the mean variance of the total net profit? So we'll work through this over here. So here are the values for single cones S and the double cones D over here. Probability mass function is given for us. So first of all, E of S is 5.25. We can see that because we can do the calculations. So it's S times the values added up as we saw before and so on. S times the values. The same for D. You'll find E of D is 4.2. E of S squared is worked out in the same way as before we did. In the same way E of D squared. And you can then work out the variance of S and variance of D. Now, E of S D is worked out as we did before. So it's S times V and the rest of it. There are some zeros here, not many zeros. There's a zero there, there's a zero there. But E of S D will be, take a look at the entry in the cell. It's going to be S times D times probability. If you do that to all the cells and add them up, you can check that you get that you will get for that 22.5, and 
and so that gives us covariance is 4.45. You can check those calculations and your problems see in the lectures. So if I put T as the total number of columns sold per day, T is S plus D, and so variance of T is variance of S plus D, my formula says this variance of S plus variance of D plus twice the covariance. I put the numbers in there, variance of S, variance of D, twice covariance. I get my number here is 0.2475, is the variance of the total number of cones sold. Now, because this is in hundreds, um, that means I need to multiply this by 100 squared. So variance, in fact, is going to be times 100 squared in the end, but I won't bother with that for the moment. Now, if I put a Z as the difference, because I was also after the difference between what's sold, then Z is S minus D, and my formula says variance of Z is variance of S minus D, less variance of S plus variance of D minus twice the covariance. If I put the numbers in there, I get 2.0475. Net profit is $2 for the single and 3 for the double. So that means 2 times the number of single cones sold and 3 times the number of double cones sold. And so the mean here is just simply the mean of 2s plus 3d, that breaks up, and I get 23.1 out of that when I do calculations. The variance of p is, again, the variance of 2s plus 3d, and my formulas tell me this is 4 times the variance of s, 2 squared, and 3 squared is 9 times the variance of d, and 2 times the 2 times the 3, times the covariance of s and d. I put the numbers in there, I get 10.00303. Now, because Essentially, this is in thou is, is sorry, this was in hundreds. I multiply this by a hundred, and so the mean profit is going to be times a hundred, two thousand three hundred and ten, and the variance is again times uh, squared. This is going to be a hundred times a hundred, that much. Or if I look at the standard deviation, it's simply a hundred times that. So you'll find that's what it works out to be. Look at the calculations. Any problems? We'll see it in lectures. Finally, just a word on correlation coefficient. Covariance is a measure of relationship, but it's not such a good one because it's scale dependent. So, covariance between AX and BY is AB times covariance of X and Y. But if all I'm doing is changing scale, for example, if I'm looking at the, the relationship between the height and the weight of a person, and the height is in meters and the weight is in kilograms, if I change the height to centimeters and leave the weight in kilograms, that relationship shouldn't change. But my relationship here for covariance tells me if I change the scale from centimeters to centimeters, I have a scale of 100 coming in, the covariance will be 100 times bigger. That's not a good relationship in that case, as a measure of relationship. So, the better one is to use correlation, which actually adjusts for the variances. So, you can see that if I scale things, it makes no difference. You can check it yourself. Because if I scale the x's, then if I scale that, this also scales, and those things cancel off. So correlation is scale independent, and that's why it's a better measure. And the other thing with correlation is it can't be bigger than negative 1. So it can't be less than negative 1 and bigger than 1. It lies always between negative 1 and 1. And so we'll see this later on when we start looking at uh, relationships between variables. That's all for this. Thank you.